This girl never believed in ghosts until she met an old man's spirit. Instead of getting terrified, the girl befriends the ghost and takes his help to scare away her own family. However, the ghost has different plans. It's the 1900s, and the English people still love to stay in palaces and manors, except for one place, Canterville. This magnificent manor is located in a peaceful location of the town, but no one wants to live here. The actual owner of the manor was a man named Sir Simon de Canterville, who died almost 300 years ago. However, his ghost still wanders inside the manor and doesn't like guests. Whoever buys this place doesn't stay here for long because Sir Simon never lets them. He keeps haunting the buyers until they decide to leave. As the manor has become notorious because of the paranormal events, no one wants to live there for long. However, an American family bought this place anyway and feels satisfied to get a good deal. Virginia is a teenage girl whose family has just moved to England and chosen Canterville as their new home. Virginia's parents and her younger twin brothers are really excited because they always wanted to explore a haunted place. However, Virginia just wants to return back to her beloved country. After reaching the manor, the family gets welcomed by the caretaker Mrs. Umney. She gives them a tour of the manor but the kids are only interested in meeting the ghost. Virginia's mother Lucretia finds the house a little gloomy because of the low light, but her husband Hiram has the perfect solution. He's a renowned scientist who is currently working on producing electricity. Lucretia gets really happy to hear that and starts dreaming about a grand banquet where she can invite the members of royal society. Meanwhile, Virginia feels uneasy and hears weird noises coming out of the paintings. Mrs. Umney invites everyone to see the beautiful library that contains thousands of valuable books. Lucretia wants to meet the last owner of this manor but he's kept in the asylum. All he does is scream in fear of the unseen. Mrs. Umney also reveals that every owner of this house was forced to leave by the ghost of Sir Simon. Most of them, like the last owner, even lost their senses. Hiram isn't bothered by this fact at all because his family is stronger than it seems. Virginia is not interested in hearing anything about this house and sits down in a corner. Suddenly a book drops in front of her and grabs her attention. It contains the history of Canterville Chase. Virginia uses the book to hit her naughty brothers and goes to her room. Lucretia keeps talking about the manor and asks her daughter to accept it, but Virginia gets angry and even refuses to eat dinner. When Lucretia leaves, Virginia notices that the book she threw magically appeared on her bed. She gets curious and starts reading the book, but falls asleep very soon. In the middle of night, Virginia is awakened by the cold breeze and she gets up to close the window. Suddenly, a message appears on the glass saying, when the barren almond bears. Before she can interpret the message, Sir Simons walks out of the wall. At first, Virginia hides under her bed, but she suddenly feels the urge to follow the ghost. Unfortunately, Sir Simon notices her and follows her to the room, but she hits him with the book. The ghost tries to be as scary as possible, but Virginia doesn't even flinch. Sir Simon still claims that he can scare away any family, so Virginia challenges him to do it in less than two weeks. The ghost is really confident in his skills and rushes to the parents' room. He starts with the old tricks like flickering lights, but Hiram and Lucretia don't even notice. Sir Simon gets frustrated and makes a full appearance but still fails to scare anyone. Lucretia gives him a lubricant for his noisy chains and tells him to leave the bedroom. Sir Simon gets really angry and shares his frustration with the skull ghost, but nothing seems to help. His tricks may have worked for 300 years, but now it's time to do something new. The next morning, Virginia goes horse riding, but finds a young man in trouble. His horse is totally out of control and may fall off the cliff, so Virginia jumps in to help. She starts scolding him for poor riding skills, without realizing that the young man is actually a duke named Henry. Virginia offers him a ride and takes him to the manor, but Henry is really shocked to see Canterville. His family doesn't like this place, because they owned it before the ghosts forced them out. Virginia asks him to forget about the past and try exploring the manor. However, as soon as they get inside, a creepy crow attacks Henry. He gets really scared, but Virginia still wants to continue exploring. She notices a locked garden and climbs on Henry's head to peek inside. She meets a suspicious gardener and starts getting a little dizzy. Luckily, Henry catches her in time and wants her to have some tea. English people always drink tea to feel better. Henry goes to find the kitchen while Virginia meets the crow again. It guides her towards the lake, but suddenly the gardener appears again and Virginia gets startled. She slips her foot and falls in the lake where she finds a beautiful necklace, but her leg gets trapped. Thankfully, Henry finds her and brings her out of the water. They go to the kitchen to have some tea, but Virginia starts talking about the gardener. 
Hearing this, Mrs. Umney gets really confused because there's been no gardener here for more than 30 years. Virginia suddenly remembers about the necklace and finds pictures of a couple inside it. Mrs. Umney recognizes the couple as Sir Simon and Lady Eleanor, but she is not comfortable to talk about them. Everyone believes that Sir Simon drowned his wife in the lake and got cursed to haunt this manor. His spirit will not rest until the prophecy is fulfilled. It must be written somewhere in the manor, but Mrs. Umney and her ancestors failed to locate the prophecy. Before Virginia can ask more questions, her mother and brothers reach there. At first, Lucretia gets angry at Virginia for bringing a boy home, but after knowing that he's a duke, she becomes really polite. Lucretia wants to spend more time with Henry, but Virginia asks him to leave. Later that night, Sir Simon gets dressed up as a skull ghost with worms coming out of his mouth. He believes that Hiram will definitely get scared this time, but Hiram starts taking his pictures. Poor Simon also gets an electric shock which makes him regret his afterlife choices. To take out his frustration, he goes to meet Virginia, but notices the necklace around her neck. Virginia refuses to give it and calls Simon a murderer, but this accusation makes him really sad. Virginia feels sorry for him and wants to know the truth, so Sir Simon starts telling her what actually happened 300 years ago. He was a rookie actor and Eleanor always helped him practice. During one of their rehearsals, Simon asked her to get on the bridge, but she accidentally fell in the water. Simon tried his best to save her but failed. That guilt has been living with him for 300 years. Virginia gets really sad by the tragic story and decides to do something to cheer up Sir Simon. She pulls out her father's car and takes Simon for a wild ride. She even lets him drive and points towards a village, but Simon can't take a single step outside the manor. He's stuck in this manor because of the curse. Virginia wants to help in finding a solution, but Sir Simon is not cooperating at all. Suddenly, the creepy crow appears again, but Simon seems to hate it. He also doesn't want to talk about the prophecy and the golden child mentioned in the book. The next week it starts to snow, but Sir Simon still hasn't succeeded in scaring any of the family members. One day he appears with a sword and calls it a new idea to scare the family. He keeps bragging about his sword fighting skills, so Virginia challenges him with a random stick. Sir Simon gets really impressed and calls Henry a lucky man to have Virginia. This statement makes her angry because she isn't ready for love or marriage. She wants to explore the world and enjoy great adventures. In response, Simon says that love is the greatest adventure one could ever have. It can make you thrill with excitement or tremble with fear. Love also makes you a beggar, a fool, a poet, or sometimes a king. Therefore, love is everything a human needs. Before Virginia can say anything, her mother invites her to meet the guests. It's an English couple who really wanted to see Canterville. The wife is a scientist like Hiram, but her main field is investigating paranormal activities. She even calls herself the ghost hunter. Lucretia offers the couple to have some tea, but the ghost hunter is more interested in investigating the house for clues of a paranormal entity. She also calls Sir Simon a murderer and starts arguing with Virginia. Sir Simon hears everything too, and he can't stand it anymore. He makes a sudden appearance and startles the guests. Afterward, he chases them around the room before kicking them out. Sir Simon and Virginia loved what they did, but Lucretia didn't want to offend her guests. She gets really angry and asks Hiram to get rid of the ghost. If she can't even meet a few guests in peace, then how is she going to hold their dream banquet? Virginia keeps giggling, which makes her mother more angry. She asks Virginia to be more responsible and prepare for the banquet, but Virginia just wants to return to her previous home. Lucretia is shocked at her daughter's behavior, but Hiram explains that Virginia is not a little child anymore. She is a grown-up lady with her own thoughts and opinions. Later that night, the twin brothers play a prank on Sir Simon and make fun of his cowardly behavior. This incident shatters Simon's confidence, and he finally gives up. Virginia still wants to scare her parents, but Sir Simon excuses himself and returns to the gloomy room behind the walls. The next morning, Virginia takes Henry's help to put fertilizer in the almond tree. She keeps hearing voices that tell her about a barren tree bearing almonds. It may be the part of the prophecy that will grant freedom to Sir Simon's spirit. Virginia has also noticed something interesting in the book she found. The picture of the locked garden keeps changing. At first it was just the locked gate, but now there's a girl and the gates are opened. Henry thinks the girl in the book looks similar to Virginia, so it must be something related to her. They rush to the garden, but surprisingly the gates are still locked. Suddenly, Sir Simon reaches there and attacks Henry like a wild ghost. Henry is worried about Virginia, but she asks him to leave this matter in her hands. As the Canterville family always hated Henry's ancestors, 
Simon doesn't want to see him ever again. Virginia asks him to get over the past, but Simon is really out of his senses. Due to his rude behavior, Virginia starts doubting their friendship and leaves in anger. Later that day, Hiram calls Sir Simon and tells him about tonight's banquet where several big names will be invited. Therefore, Hiram doesn't want any disturbance from Sir Simon. However, Simon immediately refuses to cooperate because this is his manner and he is free to do anything he wants. In response, Hiram pulls out the camera flash and starts torturing Sir Simon. The time has changed and the humans have created advanced sources of powers that ghosts like Simon can't even comprehend. Simon gets really offended by this behavior, but he can't leave the manor because of the curse. Therefore, he just sits on the roof and waits for the banquet to end. As the night sets in, several dukes and royal society members enter the manor. They all seem really impressed by the peaceful environment and the beautiful arrangements. Virginia also gets dressed up like the English people, but she feels really shy to step out of her room. Luckily, Henry reaches there and offers to be Virginia's guide for tonight. He takes her hand and introduces her to each guest one by one. After a quick round, they sit down on the dining table and Henry finally gets a chance to talk about their relationship. He starts by admiring Virginia's dress, but Hiram interrupts him to make an announcement. First of all, he thanks all the guests for joining him tonight. Cantor Villa has a blood-curdling reputation, but Hiram is going to change it forever. He requests everyone to extinguish their candles so he can introduce the new wonder of the modern world, electricity. As soon as the bulbs turn on, everyone glues their eyes to the ceiling. They have never seen something so magical. Suddenly the lights turn off again and the pumpkin ghost appears out of nowhere. The guests become terrified but Hiram asks them to calm down because it is just a harmless prank of the twin brothers. Hiram tells the kids to stop right now, but the prank has already gotten out of their hands. Now everything is controlled by Sir Simon. He is mad at Henry who dared to step in Canterville again. In anger, Simon loses his senses and starts to harass everyone. He even attacks the poor musicians and lifts them into the air. He also confronts Hiram and threatens him to leave the house forever. Simon regrets letting a stupid American family ruin his vintage manor. He also destroys all the electric bulbs and makes everyone evacuate the building. Virginia asks him to stop but Simon has totally grown crazy. He starts setting fire on everything and laughs at everyone's helplessness. He doesn't even spare the kids and traps them in the fire. Luckily, Henry and Virginia save them and run towards the exit. Everyone gets out in time except for Henry. He is stuck under the fallen chandelier. Virginia risks her life to save Henry and enters the burning house. Sir Simon asks her to save her life, but she can't leave Henry. If their ancestors hated each other, it doesn't mean that Simon and Henry must do the same. Simon eventually feels ashamed of himself and extinguishes the fire. He also clears the entrance and begs Virginia to forgive him. Henry blames himself for triggering the ghost and promises to never get near Canterville again. He likes being with Virginia, but he can't risk her safety. The next morning, Hiram invites the ghost hunter to get rid of Sir Simon once and forever. She has invented a deadly ray gun that can weaken the ghost and trap him inside a special case. Once the ghost hunter succeeds in capturing Sir Simon, she plans to do bizarre experiments on him. Virginia gets really uncomfortable by this idea, but her parents immediately agree. The ghost hunter pulls out her ghost tracker and starts looking for Sir Simon. Virginia is still angry at what Simon did, but she can't let him get hurt. She requests her brothers to distract the ghost hunter. Meanwhile, she can help Simon find an escape. After looking through the whole house, Virginia ends up in front of the walls where Simon used to disappear. All of a sudden, a secret door opens up and leads Virginia to the room where Simon hides. He has become really gloomy and only talks about the past memories. Simon is really tired of all the chase and wants to rest in peace like the other souls. When Virginia forces him to get up, he starts telling the actual story of his death. He didn't always hate Henry's ancestors because Eleanor also belonged to that family. After her death, her evil uncle accused Simon of Eleanor's death and put him in a prison built inside Canterville. But in reality, he was the one who damaged the bridge and planned everything to take over Canterville. Poor Simon couldn't prove himself innocent and eventually died in the prison. Now he blames himself for letting Eleanor get on the bridge. Suddenly, the walls start to shake because the ghost hunter is trying to break in. While looking for an exit, Virginia notices a painting of the garden on the wall and the prophecy written on it. Simon always knew where it was, but he preferred to keep it a secret. Virginia doesn't understand the situation and forces Simon to follow her to the garden. Simon keeps stopping her 
but she reads the prophecy and the gates open. Simon finally reveals that he can only be set free if an innocent girl like Virginia will go inside the garden and beg the great old man for his mercy. Simon doesn't want to put her in danger, but Virginia does it willingly. The garden takes them to a magical land where they meet the grand old man who is actually the gardener Virginia met earlier. The book was also written by him. The gardener allows Simon to unite with Eleanor, but Virginia can't go back. She also died as soon as she entered the Garden of Death. After peeking through the gates, Virginia also realizes that her body is still in the other world, while her soul is trapped in the garden. The gardener challenges Simon for a sword fight, and the winner will decide the fate of Virginia. Simon tries his best, but the gardener turns into a scary monster. Henry also reaches the gates and reads the prophecy to get inside. Virginia and Henry try to help Simon, but the fight ends with a draw. Virginia and Henry are free to go, but Simon will be stuck in this garden forever. Simon accepts the decision because Virginia helped him spend the best time since he died. He turns into a stone statue while Virginia and Henry return to their bodies. Virginia still doesn't give up and opens the garden gates to find Simon. She hugs Simon's statue and starts crying at his helplessness. All Simon wanted was to meet his love. Little does she know, this is not the end. The actual prophecy asked for an innocent girl's tears. As they hit the statue, Simon gets free and unites with Eleanor's soul in heaven. Henry finally gets a chance to confess his love, which Virginia gladly accepts. After a few weeks, they get married and start a new life in Canterville. 